welcome to Mars Hill United Methodist Church. I am so glad you decided to worship with us this day. Just a couple announcements to let you know about. We are celebrating Holy Communion today, so if you would uh, like, you can gather some elements in your house, some, some juice or wine and bread, crackers, whatever you have in the house is fine uh, to be able to have communion with us. Uh, also, this afternoon, or, or the, the afternoon of the 7th, depending on when you're watching this, uh, we will be having a, um, a outdoor communion service at 3 p.m., weather permitting. And this is a bring your own elements, bring a, a chair to sit on, wear a mask, and stay socially distanced, and, and we can have a, a safe time of communion. And just look on the website just to see if uh, weather is going to call it off. We'll also make an announcement in, in Sunday school if you're in for that, uh, which, al which also uh, brings us to just remember we have our fellowship times. Thursday at 3 p.m. is just a casual time of visiting. If, you, if you're missing folks and want to connect in on that and talk with people, please come to that. And then there is a, always a, a wonderful Sunday school class at 9.45 that uh, you can uh, reach on the website under the, the virtual Sunday School link for, for both of those events. And Lent is coming up soon, so know that we will be having an Ash Wednesday service online on the 17th that you can uh, click on and, and be a part of that starting of the, of the season. Now I invite you to open your hearts and your minds be transformed by the living God this day. to our prayer list this week, so let us be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we open ourselves to your grace, your gracious touch, your love, your healing this day. And we call upon you to bring your healing and your love into the world. Lord, we ask that you bring your healing touch to all those who are suffering with COVID, all those who are 
uh, mourning people who have passed, those who are lonely and tired of being so because of this pandemic. And Lord, we lift to you the healthcare workers that are, that are tired and worn down from this long, long journey. Lord, we lift to you our country and ask your blessing to bring healing and unity and, and, and connection to us that not that we might all think the same, but that we might recognize the, your image in one another even when we disagree. Lord, bring healing to Chuck and let the, the chemo work what it needs to do and give him strength for that journey. We hold up Carol as she cares for him. We hold up Pierre and Phyllis, Ruth and Patricia. We hold up Frida that you might shrink that cyst on her spine. We hold up Jean and Barbara, Luke, Cheyenne, Rebecca and her family. And for all those concerns that, that I did not mention out loud, Lord, you know the places of our hearts that need healing. You know the concerns that we lift to you. So we ask all of this in your son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
<clears throat> we continue in the lectionary in Mark's Gospel, remaining in the first chapter. Mark has the, the action moving quickly, so we move from scene to scene. So we have covered a lot, but we're not very far along yet in this, this uh, exciting Gospel. So we hear now this story, which comes directly after the one from last week, where Jesus was in the synagogue and cast out the evil spirit within it. After leaving the synagogue, starting with, with verse 29, after leaving the synagogue, Jesus, James, and John went home with Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed, sick with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He went to her and took her by the hand and raised her up. The fever left her, and she served them. That evening at sunset, people brought to Jesus those who were sick or demon-possessed. The whole town gathered near the door. He healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases, and he threw out many demons. But he didn't let the demons speak, because they recognized him. Early in the morning, well before sunrise, Jesus rose and went to a deserted place where he could be alone in prayer. Simon and those with him tracked him down. When they found him, they told him, Everyone's looking for you. He replied, Let's head in the other direction, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there too. That's why I've come. He traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and throwing out demons. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I always had a little bit of a trouble with the way that this particular passage starts out. I know it, it, it might be a little petty of me, but it, it kind of feels like, you know, they're heading to, to uh, Simon's house, and, and it's like, maybe that's because they, they heard about the, the, the excellent fried chicken his mother-in-law would make for them. And, and so he was really looking forward to that. And he comes in and what, she's got a fever. So he's immediately got to go and heal her so she can get up and serve them. Because <laughs> you're better now. What about that fried chicken? It, it feels, it just kind of feels that way. I'm like, my gosh, she's had a fever. Can she not rest for a while? And can't you all get your dinner or something? Do you really have to get her up to serve you immediately? Now, maybe you never thought about that with this text, but it always kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way when I, when I read it. But when you look at the Greek, it doesn't have that connotation so much. Well, it, for one, this image of Jesus taking her hand and I think it seems very soft and gentle like the the young teacher coming to the elderly woman's hand and holding it very very gently and sweetly but that's not the word in Greek in fact the word is translated in other portions of the scriptures as seas it's a much more powerful, and I don't think he used that word here because I don't think he grabbed her in a violent way. I don't think it uses that word to try to connotate that, but rather that there is power in this touch. The word actually has the same root for democracy, and so it's just a word about that's about sharing power, and this is a word about power, the way he takes her hand powerful and with that power and his touch he raises her up 
He offers her this power without words. This, this is a healing that is done merely by touch. That his power empowers her to rise up. And she serves them. Now that's the part that kind of bothers me. And it could well mean all she did was make dinner for them. But the word serve is actually the darkness. It's the same word that comes to the Greek, that comes from the Greek for diaconal minister or a deacon or a deaconess. That word in use in the New Testament often means service for the church, service for God, service for Christ. It can be a very empowering what label and understanding and certainly service for the church can mean making food there are many many ways and places in which people make food to to feed those who are hungry and that is a way of serving God so when I think of it more that way it seems a great privilege for this woman not an imposition that she is touched in this powerful way and that she gives given a chance to serve Christ and the disciples in all the ways that that might mean she serves and then we have Jesus uh, now that he is here a lot of people are brought to him who are sick and demon possessed and they gather around and they're carried in and it's interesting to remember that this passage starts with them leaving the synagogue to come here and here they are synagoguing out in this house out in the world Jesus is breaking some of that separation point and maybe that's something that's been really good for us this year. Because now we're having to worship in a way where we're not coming all to this building. Some of us come here so that everyone else can, can click in on their computer and connect and church wherever you are. And maybe that's something that we can, we can carry through that helps us. If we think that we can, that church is a verb and it's not, it's not connected solely with a physical building of the noun and that we can church all over the place. Because that's what Jesus is doing. Taking care of the ministry, of casting out the evil, the selfish, the catharsis of cleansing, the demons. He's healing. He's offering the powerful touch and care in the world. And then he wakes up very early. And it is, it is interesting in the Greek that his, his uh, words for leaving town, it, there, there's actually a double understanding of how they've written it down. There's two similar words that basically mean the same that are back to back. And they don't put it in the translation because it would be awkward. Maybe we could say he was fixing to go and then he up and went. Although that's, that's not really very accurate to the, to the Greek. But it does have he was going to leave and he left. And there's, a, there's an extra emphasis. And I'll say that, that Mark doesn't use words carelessly. He has the fewest number of words of any of the gospel, and I think he is very careful with each of them. He wanted to specifically emphasize the leaving and separating himself from the others. To go out to the wilderness. Now, the wilderness is just the space outside of of the houses and the, and the settlements. It's just going out by themselves. But the same wilderness is the place that the Spirit drove him to as soon as he came up from his baptism earlier 
in this chapter, and he returns to this wild place so that he can pray and hear God. He knew that it was important for him to do, that he needed that. That the connection with people and the hustle and the bustle and the action and all that was happening in that, in that house that folks wanted to continue to do. That he needed some space from it. So he went out to the wilderness and they hunted him down because folks are looking for you. They, they want you to come back and continue to teach and to heal and to be there with them. And maybe it was tempting for Jesus to want to just stay there, to just speak to a friendly crowd and to care for them. Maybe that's why the double emphasis on the fact that he needed to remove himself from that space in order to, to pray and hear God. But he did hear, and he said, this is not where I need to stay. We are on the road again. We are heading to the other villages because there are other people there that need this proclamation, that need to hear, that need to be healed, that need to be cleansed. There are other places that I need to go. This is the nature of what my calling is. He had the clarity of it and was able to express that so his disciples knew this is where we go if we're following Christ. Now, there's two main things I want us to try to bring to our lives today. And one is this need for us to have times separated where we can pray. Now, I don't think it's necessarily necessary to go into the wilderness, although that can be a very helpful and good thing, and especially for those who, who feel a big connection to God when out in the wilderness and the wild places but at least enough wilderness to where you can set your phone down for a while and disconnect from social media and the stress and the, the list and the things you need to do. That there is a time to set it aside so you can listen. You know, one of the great gifts we are given in the Ten Commandments that is so often ignored is that we are supposed to take one day off a week and Sabbath. And I like that Sabbath. To think of that as a verb, like we think of church as a verb, we need to Sabbath. And honestly, I don't think it really matters that much which day of the week it is. I don't think it needs to be Sunday or Saturday, but I do think it needs to be a day where you can set everything down and set your mental list down so that you can listen. You don't have to be alone the whole time. Certainly connecting with those that you love is a good way to do it, but I suggest it be less technological and more in the real world. And that you save some time just to be alone with God. It's a gift we're given. And yet it is so often given back to Given, given back away. Take time. You're, you're given it. You're requ it's required of you. And maybe you think there's no way you have time. And I invite you to try to find the time. Because it's important. So take time to listen. And try to find out what direction God is wanting to send you in. Because it might be different than what you're thinking. It might be different than what feels comfortable or what has been successful and what would be easy to stay within. And that is what we're trying to intentionally do as, as a church with, with the time of visioning that we're gonna be doing during Lent on, on Monday evenings. And, and so we'll, we'll give you more information about that 
uh, as it comes up, we're going to be having a time where we can be together and think and pray and try to seek that direction God is having for us. But it is also a time I invite you now and over Lent to find time and space for yourself as well to think and pray and be quiet and open ourselves to God's direction and think that he really could bring us some. And maybe we won't hear in words that are direct in the ways that we would like or think that we should have, but at least open ourselves up to give space to hear. Now, sometimes the problem is that we do hear and we do have a feeling that there's something more we need to do and it's kind of easy to brush it to the side and think, no, that's not something that I should do. Other people would be better at doing that. I'm really not very well equipped for that. I, I'm surely not hearing, hearing that right. There's really nothing that I would have to offer and people will put aside and push to the side the offerings they could have. And so I want you to come back to the first part of the text. This feverish mother-in-law that Jesus comes to and takes her hand with power and raises her up that she might serve. What is it that's keeping you from doing your greatest service? Is it, is it fear? Is it self-doubt? Maybe, maybe it is a physical hurting and, 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 and lack of health. Maybe it's just a lack of confidence, a lack of trust in the fact that this touch that Christ offers is one of power. One that can live within us and raise us up to more than we realize. Take time. Take it as a gift. And take the power that Christ offers you. Take it in as a gift. You might find that you can do far more than you thought you could. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are before you laid bare, you know, the places in our hearts and our spirits where we are weak. You know, the things that we have done and the things that we have left undone, plus you know the pains and the struggles that have led us to that, the wounds from our past, our fears, or our lack of faith in our ability. You know the things that hold us back. Lord, let us reach for your hand that in it your power might come into us. Cleanse us of all things that have fallen short of your great calling and empower us that we might serve you. Lord, in silence we lift to you our cares, our concerns, our hurts, and our pains that you might touch us with power. As you breathe in, I invite you to imagine the light of Christ coming to you. Imagine the touch of Christ's hand coming to you. Feel the power that God has for you. 
the cleansing of your spirit, the renewal of your strength, and the great direction and calling you would have for each of us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Know that without doubt, there is nothing that you have done or left undone that is greater than the power that God has to heal you, to forgive you, and make you new. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and made new. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to get your elements for communion. We are not doing the full thanks great Thanksgiving today. We'll be doing that in the, in the afternoon service. So let us join together in blessing the elements. God's great story of salvation reaches across the ages. It is a story of where God reaches in to bring power and grace and where we failing people forget or are afraid or are distracted by many things. It is a story where God continues to reach. It is a story where God continues so much that he comes in the person of Christ. And Christ reaches to the places that were forgotten, eating with sinners, healing, casting out demons in the midst of this life with us, reaching for hands and offering healing and power. And Christ so knew us from being with us as one of us, that he knew upon his leaving that he needed to leave us something to touch and to feel. And so on his last night with us, he gathered with his disciples and he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And it's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink. In remembrance of me and so in remembrance of these your great acts we take this gift that we might touch that we might be a part of the power that Christ offers so I let you hold the bread that you have in your hand and as you break it know that we who are broken are made whole in this gift. And take the cup. Know that this is the life of Christ that was poured out that we might live. Drink from the cup. Eat the bread. Touch in this gift the powerful hand. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit. These gifts, all of these people from everywhere that we are, 
bring us together that we might feel your power pouring out into us in this gift. We thank you. It is a holy mystery that you are here for us. Let this mystery grow and strengthen in us and increase us that we might be faithful followers of you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Carry the light of Christ within you. Carry the peace and the power and the grace of God. Go in that peace and power to offer light to all the world. Go in Christ. <laughs>